Hey, Gerald Spore, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro. We just wrapped up on Lake Champlain. I want to give you a little recap. I'm getting ready right now for the St. Lawrence River for the last elite event of the season, or last regular season elite event of the season. And as I'm taking off some stuff from Champlain and tying on stuff for the St. Lawrence, I figured it'd be a good time to tell you what I did over there. So we straight up went for the win on Champlain. That was the only reason we signed up for that tournament because I thought it would be fun to fish one of the best lakes in the country and really just swing for the fence. Um, we wasn't in it for points or anything like that. So uh, that was the first time I've ever gone to Ticonderoga on Lake Champlain. And the reason I did that is because I felt like that was my best chance of winning. Um, I always usually fish for smallmouth on the north end and I could catch all the smallmouth I wanted to, but I felt like it was really hard to get to that 20 pounds on smallmouth every day. So it, it, Ticonderoga, I felt like offered that if you can get a few of the big bites. So the first day we achieved it, we had 20 pounds, 12 ounces. We were right in the mix. And then we went into day two and we only had 16 pounds. We didn't get those big bites like we did the first day. I'm not sure if my areas just didn't hold up or a little bit of, uh, there was a few other competitors that were fishing it, but I don't. I think there was enough fish there. I just don't feel like they bit good enough. Um, so we had, we fell a little shy of making the final day cut. We finished uh, six ounces out of the cut. We finished that tournament 14th, which is still a great tournament out of 200 competitors in the opens. So I felt like it was worth me telling everyone what I was doing. My number one deal was uh, flipping loose milfoil down in Ticonderoga and I was using my new signature series jig a company called Beast Coast out of Connecticut those guys are not very far from Ticonderoga uh, so they're very familiar with that kind of fishing and they gave me free reins on building this jig this was my signature series it's called the G-Spo Battle Flip it's now available at Tackle Warehouse but we spared no expense on this jig everything from the hook to the weed guard to the head and I flipped that looser grass with this and I paired it with a D-bomb on the back, of course. And, um, and I had 60 pound Sunline braid on a 7-8 extra heavy rod and a 8 to 1 gear ratio reel. And basically I was blind, not really blind flipping, but I didn't know where a fish would be. I was getting in these big vegetation areas and I was basically just trying to toss the jig out in front of me imagining where these strands of milfoil were coming down and um and then i would let it fall sometimes it would bite it on the first flip and then sometimes i would pick it up and yo-yo it in the milfoil for just a second pull it up and try to flip it over about 10 feet or so and i was trying to just cover certain certain areas i felt like had a little bit of i guess a harder bottom in the grass but when i moved inwards a little bit and got the, the, the grass changed in several several different situations where I'd move inward a little bit and the vegetation vegetation would start to blend where you would get coontail mixed with milfoil and eelgrass and you get all these combinations of grass I wanted a more direct fall than a jig would offer a jig tends to want to glide a little more when it falls so I went to the punch skirt and uh, and this is a punch skirt from to me just the best punch skirt you can you can buy uh, this is one from some guys down in Louisiana it's called Del Delta Lures uh, it's a Delta Lures punch skirt and I called those guys and asked them to make me this color it's got a little bit of pumpkin seed in it with some with some pink strands in it and some light blue and I put that on a half ounce uh, Beast Coast tungsten weight with a rubber nail on the inside and uh, and then of course I put that on a GP3 color D-bomb that's just a green pumpkin with a little bit of purple swirl in it with a 5 aught hack attack hook again 60 pound blue sunline braid and uh, this is on a 7.6 extra heavy just micro magic pro on an 8 to 1 gear ratio reel and these two right here were my were, were my main two deals in Ticonderoga uh, you know I would go through an area and I would flip that inner stuff with this and then when I would get out on the outer stuff on the edge of the loose milfoil then I would pick up the jig and I just kept making circles in two or three different areas um, so it was a it was a go for broke kind of kind of deal uh, especially when I felt like I could have went and caught all the small I, got, I have so much smallmouth stuff on Champlain I've spent so much time idling around with my Ray Marines and marking big rock and stuff that literally I can go there in a the blind and catch tons of smallmouth every time I've ever been there but 
I just didn't feel like it was the type of fish to win and I didn't spend enough time on the north end to find the large mouth to, uh, to mix in with the small mouth but I even in that situation I felt like every small mouth I caught I wanted to call so therefore fishing for the small mouth I just felt like I was wasting my time so I, I, I committed to Ticonderoga I want to get myself away from the small mouth completely so I wouldn't be tempted I wanted to commit to that flipping bite in that grass and I felt like that was how you could possibly win the tournament um, it didn't work out but we still had a great event but while I was smallmouth fishing on Lake Champlain I, I was uh, drop shotting the new D-bomb this is the Gobi bite color it's it's uh, it's a it's a, the bomb shot. I'm sorry. It's the new bomb shot from from missile. You can see this one's all chewed up. It's broken half and everything. But this thing has unbelievable action in the water. It's now my favorite drop shot bait. I'm so excited that John Cruz came out with this bait because uh, when you're smallmouth fishing, you're getting a lot of bites. You burn through a lot of these. So it's great to see him have have such a great bait that I can get my hands on so easily. Uh, and of course, I was pairing that with a half ounce. Beast Coast tungsten uh, drop shot weight. Um, so anyway, that was on a that was on 12 pound Sunline braid and a eight pound Sunline shooter leader. And it was like I said, it was a great event. And now all this stuff's getting changed, except for this rod. We're gonna go ahead and keep this one rigged up because we're going to the St. Lawrence River. But I'm gonna strictly target smallmouth when we go to the St. Lawrence River. Um, because I feel like the best you can do on largemouth is 18 to 20 pounds. That's the best. And then it, it typically is a, a smallmouth deal over there. Some guys get paid on largemouth, but I, I don't feel like you have a chance to win on largemouth. I don't think anyone's ever won on largemouth over there. So it'll be a different deal. I'll have to commit to this. I mean, we're sitting in... 16th place in angler of the year points right now in the elite series with one regular season event to go um pretty much if I, I think if i get about a top 50 in this tournament we'll be locked in the classic going into the aoi championship and that's where we want to be so it kind of loosens me up a little bit and i get to swing for the fence a little bit on the st lawrence river i still have to make sure i catch what i what i need to catch to get to the classic but um but we are going to put a little pressure on it in this one because it, we're sitting good in points right now with one tournament left to go. So, so thanks for everybody for all the responses, calls, texts, questions on Facebook and everything related to Lake Champlain. And I promised a lot of people that I was going to show, show you what I did over there and talk about it. Um, so one thing I did learn about Ticonderoga real quick is it's not as bad as, of a run as they say it is. The wind blew really hard, but once you kind of get south on Lake Champlain, it got slick as glass, and those guys on the north end were fighting four-foot waves trying to catch their smallmouth, and we were running 65-70 in this uh, Bass Cat Lynx all the way down there, caught our fish, ran all the way back with no problems, and then guys were talking about, man, I feel sorry for whoever run the Ticonderoga, but they fooled me on that one in the past, and the tie run is not as bad as they say it is. So. So look, look at Ticonderoga next time you go to Champlain and, uh, and, and try some of those baits I told you about and I'll see you at the next event.